morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other health care practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here from, for you. We welcome your phone calls, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our call-in number. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, our true skin health products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We have blog posts and news stories as well as the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. You can order products right off the phone or you can sign up to join the team for one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business or thank you checks associated with having your own business. If you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded, if the entrepreneurial spirit attracts you and it's not for everybody. I've been an entrepreneur most of my adult life and I love it. I love being my own boss. I love making my own hours. I love not having to listen to a boss and, and making my own money and keeping the money I make. If you are, have that kind of spirit, you definitely want to check out the longevity business business. You can help change lives and make money at the same time. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team, or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And also, I would like to remind you to please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Serum, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel, all made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, oil oil, silicon, water, emulsifiers, surfactants, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. Welcome back to The Bright Side. Last we spoke, we were talking about green tea. I absolutely love the stuff. Super nutritionally valuable. Last program we talked about it as a DHT suppressor. DHT is super testosterone. Excessive production of DHT is linked to a whole range of health issues, including male prostate problems, male pattern baldness, acne. It may also be linked to something called PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a real mess, PCOS, as anybody who is dealing with it will tell you. It is, uh, occurs in women. It's marked by excessive secretion of ovarian tissue that shows up as cysts. Doctors will give you birth control pills for it, which is really dumb. Doctors really don't know what the heck to do with PCOS, but I'm going to tell you what to do about it because it is an insulin problem and it is an estrogen problem. Anytime you have excess growth of tissue anywhere in the body, whether it's cysts or fibroids, 
or acne, you want to consider the hormone estrogen and you want to also consider the hormone insulin. Insulin and estrogen are growth substances. And anytime you have excessive growth, you want to think about insulin and you want to think about estrogen. And thinking about insulin and estrogen means thinking about your food. Because insulin basically is an eating hormone and estrogen metabolism is processed, uh, estrogen is processed via metabolism in the digestive tract. So anytime you have an estrogen problem and there's a whole bunch of health challenges that involve estrogen, including autoimmunity and cancer and PCOS, or anytime you have an insulin problem, i.e. blood sugar problems, you want to think about food food and you want to think about digestion. In the case of excessive secretion of DHT, you're talking obesity and acne and hair loss. This is for PCOS, I should say. In the case of PCOS, you're talking about obesity, acne, body hair, reproductive issues, including infertility, hair loss, PMS. This is in women, guy. This is in women, you guys. Uh, hair loss in women. Anxiety, depression, ultimately even heart disease and cancer can be linked to PCOS issues. The two most important causes, as, as I said, of PCOS and of ovarian cysts, you're talking insulin, you're talking estrogen, and it's not just estrogen, it's the toxic breakdown products of estrogen. This is where the triangle of disease comes in. Always backtrack to the triangle of disease. This is so liberating if you're dealing with a health challenge. If you think you have to have a special protocol for your MS or a special protocol for your PCOS or a special protocol for your prostate issues, your male pattern baldness, you're being diverted from the real causes and the real solutions to your health challenge. The real cause is going to be underneath the symptoms. Male pattern baldness is a symptom. Prostate issues are symptoms. PCOS is symptoms. Symptoms, is, symptoms are not diseases. Symptoms lead you. They point you to breakdowns, and those breakdowns are always, 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 always going to fundamentally involve the three points in the triangle of disease, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. This is so important, number one, because it works, because it's really where the problem is, but number two, because it frees us from the tyranny of the medical model. It allows us to deal with our health challenges ourselves. If we think there's some kind of magical protocol or magical formula or magical medicine or magical procedures, medical procedure that will take care of our problems, we're losing our power. The medical model is disempowering. This is the biggest problem I have with the medical model is the way it takes our power power away from us. I just I was in Canada a couple of weeks ago, and this is really this idea of the medical model disempowering, disempowering citizens, and with the help, with the collusion of the government, is really a, a prominent in Canada because they have this well-entrenched uh, nationalized healthcare system. We're on the way. We're, we're not far behind from that, but it's really dramatic in Canada, this disempowerment where people just say, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to eat whatever I want and go to the doctor. Oh, the doctor will take care of me. But the doctor put me on statin drugs. Look, the doctor doesn't put anybody on anything. We have to voluntarily take our statin drugs. We have to voluntarily participate in the medical model, and we do it by abdicating responsibility. Now, there's a, there's a good side to abdicating responsibility. We're not responsible. It's easy. Let somebody else take care of us. But the downside to abdicating responsibility is we don't get better. And one of the major reasons why we abdicate responsibilities is because it's this, it seems so mysterious and it seems so difficult and it seems so intricate and baroque and detailed and we just don't know what to do, so we just give up. Well, I'm here to tell you it's easy. It's simple. The triangle of disease underlies everything and the triangle of disease is firmly, squarely in our laps as far as how we manipulate it, i.e. food, the digestive system blood sugar system and the adrenal thyroid complex. That's true for anything and it's true for PCOS. If you are confronted with any health challenge or whatever it is, including PCOS, go back to the triangle. Reversing PCOS is something anybody can do. And quickly, when you approach PCOS by working with your digestive health, with your blood sugar system and the adrenal thyroid complex by calming the body down, PCOS symptoms like any other symptoms can begin to reverse in a matter of days. It's just the way the body works. It's going to seem like a miracle, but it's just the way the body works. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a quick break and come back with more good health information right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 
Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, our Truth Skin Health products, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. If you want to sign up and join the Bright Side Ben team, please call our phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can sign up right off the website. You can also purchase longevity products right off our website uh, websites as well. And also uh, want to remind you to check out benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. Okay. So we're talking PCOS. We're talking about nutritional supplementation for PCOS. We're talking about the triangle of disease, which underlies all health challenges. Always, always, always focus first on the health of the digestive system. I'm not Mr. Food Guy. This isn't about beating anybody up for food choices. It's just to say, if you have a chronic long-term health challenge, you have an inflammatory challenge. That's because all chronic long-term health challenges involve inflammation. If you have an inflammatory challenge, you have an immune challenge because the inflammatory system is the calling card of the immune system. The immune system is the defensive system, which means something has activated defenses, which means there's an offending agent, which means... If there's an offending agent, it's getting into the body somehow, and unless you're shooting it up through your skin, it's coming in through food. It could be food or it can be the intestine. Always focus on the health of the intestine for any health challenge, including PCOS. Use probiotics. Use fermented foods. These are not only important for the intestine and the microbiome, they're also important for helping the body process estrogen. From research published in the Journal of the Public uh, of the Public Library of Science, JPLOS, they call it, JPLOS, April 2016, quote, dysbiosis of gut microbiota. That means messed up gut bacteria associated with PCOS microbiota interventions through fecal transplant. This is how one of the latest things that they're doing. They're doing fecal transplants on uh, to support intestinal health. Whether you, well, that sounds gross or not. The point is is that by playing around with your gut microbiome, by working on the gut microbiome, you can improve PCOS. According to this article, microbiota interventions, supporting probiotics, i.e., were beneficial for the treatments of PCOS. Use apple cider vinegar. Use digestive enzymes with your meals, especially pancreatic enzymes. One of the neatest things about the ultimate enzymes from longevity is there's pancreatic enzymes in there. Enzymes from the pancreas are especially important for helping the body process fats. They, if you have cystic fibrosis, which in many ways is a, a, a health challenge that's associated with fat malabsorption, they give you pancreatic enzymes. Well, you don't have to have a full-blown disease to have fat malabsorption. Many people do, especially women as they get older. If you've had a, a gallbladder removed, if you have liver disease, and 100 million Americans have liver disease, chances are good you've got fat malabsorption issues, pancreatic enzymes can help. If you have PCOS, pancreatic enzymes can help. You can get pancreatic enzymes by themselves or these are supplements I'm talking, or you can get them in your ultimate enzymes from longevity. All of these strategies are to help your body process estrogen, and that means they're not just important for PCOS, they're also going to be helpful for you if you're dealing with autoimmune issues. Remember, autoimmunity is an estrogen issue. Then there's the whole insulin connection. In addition to estrogen, and dysbiosis and digestion, PCOS is also a blood sugar challenge. It's estrogen and blood sugar. It's a diabetic type illness. Even if you're, pa even if the, uh, you're not, or whoever the patient is, is not diagnosed as a diabetic, nothing, next to working on estrogen and digestion, nothing is more important for the PCOS patient than getting her blood sugar under control. And that means using all your anti-diabetic strategies, including using green tea, which we are still talking about. And don't, it doesn't matter if a doctor tells you you're not a diabetic. Oh, you don't have diabetes. Oh, your blood sugar is fine. He doesn't know. He only knows what he's checking that moment, and he's only going by reference ranges. If you're symptomatic, 
if you have symptoms of blood sugar, uh, of messed up blood sugar, you got messed up blood sugar, whether you call it diabetes or you call it dysglycemia or call it messed up blood sugar, you'll get better by working on your sugar. It doesn't matter what your diagnosis is. If I had to tell you there was one fundamental idea for the bright side, there's probably a lot of fundamental ideas, but one of the most fundamental ideas, certainly one of the main fundamental ideas is your diagnosis doesn't matter. It's just a way of putting you in the computer. It's just a way for your doctor to have a shortcut so he doesn't have to think about you as a person. It's meaningless. You go by your symptoms. If you got PCOS, whether they told you you're a diabetic or not, whether they said your blood sugar is fine or it, it, uh, uh, they told you it is, and you're still, you, uh, you still have dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, whether it's full-blown diabetes is irrelevant. All of which is to say, well, we got the power, folks. If you got PCOS, you treat yourself uh, as a, a dysglycemic, you treat yourself as if you have messed up blood sugar, you're going to get better. And that means using all of the strategies we talk about here on the bright side. Of course, the number one strategy for keeping your blood sugar stable is not to eat the sugar, not to eat the carbs, the fast-burning carbs, there is, that is. You still need carbs, and most of our calories typically are going to come from carbs unless you're going ketogenic. Now, of course, the ketogenic diet is an awesome diet for PCOS patients. It's an awesome diet for longevity. It's an awesome diet, a diet for any inflammatory health issues. It's an awesome diet for everybody. Especially if you're dealing with uh, uh, dysglycemic issues like PCOS. Use the B vitamins. The B vitamins are your sugar processing vitamins, among other things. They're your sugar processing vitamins, and B vitamin deficiency is alarmingly common because it's water soluble and we urinate out our B vitamins. Niacin and thiamine are, are your two superstar B vitamin sugar processing nutrients vitamin B3 and vitamin B1. Selenium, sulfur, chromium, vanadium, zinc, your mighty 90 essential nutrients, your sweeties, your ultimate selenium. And if you're jonesing for sugar, if you're addicted to sugar, there are craving, uh, anti-craving strategies that you can use too. More protein is anti-craving, especially something called the BCAAs, or the branched chain amino acids. The branched chain amino acids are amino acids that are found in high protein foods. You can actually get BCAAs as supplements. Whey protein is a great source of the BCAAs. Whey protein also is anti-sugar or will help support sugar cravings. Using cinnamon with anything that's sweet will help you uh, get a more bang for your sugar buck. You'll be more satisfied from your sweetness by using cinnamon. Cinnamon not only helps amplify sweetness, but cinnamon also helps the body process sugar. Using all your polyphenols will help your body process sugar. All the plant nutrients that we've been talking about here for the last couple of months and we will continue to talk about can help you process sugar. More fat can help uh, with sugar cravings. Using soluble fiber at the beginning of your meals, you can grind up chia seeds. You can, you can just soak your chia seeds and that will provide you with soluble fiber. Uh, veggies, of course, are a wonderful source of soluble fiber. Always combine your soluble fiber with liquid, with water. Using soluble fiber and water will swell up the belly. And that will help you, not, not only will it help fill you up so you're not, you're not jonesing for sugar as much, but even if you do sugar, the soluble fiber will help flush the sugar out. Soluble fiber is incredible stuff for helping mop up toxicity, including, by the way, toxicity f uh, coming from estrogen metabolites. Soluble fiber. Chia seed is my favorite soluble fiber, but even any seeds are going to get you some of it. And you can buy straight soluble fiber, too. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Our line's open. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return on the bright side right after this. Back on the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and the phone lines are quiet, quiescent. So we have a full uh, empty board here. If you've ever tried to get on board and not able to, now's the time to call us, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're dealing with PCOS or insulin problems or any health challenge, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that, 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Bomb. By the way, the Omega-6 healing cream is great for sunburn. I actually developed it for burns, and it, it's a wonderful way to treat sunburn or any burns or any kind of wound to skin. It's made with the fat-soluble vitamin C and cholesterol and uh, like all our Truth Skin Health products, no preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax water, emulsifiers, silicon, uh, surfactants, fragrance, 
preservative. I think I said those. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Okay, from Yale University and Brigham and Woman's Hospital, this is a news release, came out yesterday, I love this, safety problems emerge with nearly one in three prescription drugs after they've been approved by the US FDA, by the US Food and Drug Administration. A new study reveals researchers examined data on drugs approved by the FDA between 2001 and 2010. The investi investigators found that 32%, one out of three drugs, had safety issues after approval. This is craziness, folks. We think we go into, you think when you go in and take a drug, it's, it's FDA approved and nothing's gonna happen? There's no such thing as a drug that's not toxic. This idea that there's only safety problems in 32% of the drugs is baloney. There's safety problems in all drugs. And people who promote drugs will tell you, oh, it's risk management. You just got to control the risk. You got to compare the risk of the side effects to the risk of the disease. I was talking to a PharmD. I had a PharmD write me a really kind of sarcastic letter, sort of nasty and sarcastic letter. And he put his phone number there, PharmD being a doctor of pharmacy. And I called him up and I wanted to talk to him. And he was actually quite nice. But I was asking him, don't you know these things are poisonous? They're not, not poetically, literally, they kill cells. He says, yeah, we know that. But it's risk management. We're comparing the risk. The risk of the disease versus the risk of the drug. Completely oblivious to the fact that there's other ways to treat and to minimize risk. Why are we going to the poisons? And then we're surprised. We hand ring. We tut tut and freak out. And when there's 32% uh, of drugs have safety issues after approval. The way drugs are approved is somebody gets a chemical and they decide that they want to uh, they want to make it into a drug. So they do. They go to the FDA and the FDA has to they have to do studies. They uh, uh, various phases. They call phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one is the first uh, the first study. The goal is just to determine what the side effects are. That's called phase one and also the kinetics or how the drug is handled by the body and usually it's done on like 50 people 50 to 100 people phase one is done on healthy volunteers and they assess the side effects on healthy volunteers that alone tells you a problem right there most people who take drugs aren't healthy so the first thing phase one is they're going to figure out what the side effects are and how the drug is processed and metabolized on healthy people and only 50 to 100 of them that's called phase one and then if there's no toxicity, remember these people are healthy and they're not on a lot of drugs, probably not on any drugs. There's only a few of them, there's only 50 of them. Anyway, after phase one, they say, oh, there's no toxicity. Now we can go into phase two. Phase two is on how the drug works. And they do phase two on a couple hundred people, 200 to 300 people, but sometimes less, sometimes 50 people. And they'll see how the drug controls the symptoms and then they'll compare it to placebos. Then they'll have to weed out what's called the placebo effect, which is a whole nother story. We shouldn't be weeding out the placebo effect. We should be figuring out the placebo effect. What is the placebo effect where the brain controls the, uh, the biochemistry of the body? Anyway, so phase two, uh, the phase two part of the, the process is when they test to see how well it controls symptoms. And then if it controls the symptoms, they go into phase three. Phase three is, uh, this is really the, the, bottom, the bottom line. Phase three is done on the largest amount of people. It could be 1,000 or 2,000 or even 3,000 people. But here's the problem. If phase three studies show that the drug is safe and effective, they move into what is called, get ready for this, post-market studies. Post-market studies are done on us. We're the post-market studies. Our mothers and fathers and kids are the post-market studies. We're the experiment. So no wonder 32% of drugs are uh, have safety problems because they're still experimenting after the drug has been approved. This model is anti-human being. This medical model, and I'm not talking about the doctors, I'm talking about the model, is anti-humanity. We have turned healthcare into a commodity, and that means we are nothing but resources. We're not patients, we're resources. We're income streams. 
because healthcare is a commodity. So all began, by the way, with the Great Society. I shouldn't say it began. It really got going with the Great Society in the 1960s with Lyndon Johnson and the welfare state. This is when big companies decided it could be very profitable to start hospital corporations and, and what they call HMO, health maintenance organizations. That's who really, between the insurance companies and the HMOs and the hospitals, that's who's running health care. And Big Farm, of course, can't forget them. That's who's running health care, and it's not in human beings' interest. So don't be surprised when you find out that your drug is toxic and has nasty side effects. And Oh, and then they say, well, they're not bad enough to take them off the market. We just put a black box warning on the, on the box. Well, who knows about the black box warning? Just the pharmacist. You don't see the box. There's no black box, black box warning on your meds. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's move to Texas and welcome Dave. What's going on, Dave? Welcome to the bright side. Hey, good morning, Dan. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? Great, great. Hey, uh, I texted you a little bit about this a couple of nights ago. I've got a uh, an old person who has leukemia. I need you to speak a little, down. Dave. Speak up just a little bit louder, will you? Or into the phone. Sure, sure. Uh, I know somebody that. Has leukemia. Okay. Um, it's their second uh, time around with the, with the disease, and he's you know, he's looking for natural treatment. He's facing okay. chemotherapy, radiation, possible right. stem cells. L- l- let me give you some ideas, right. okay? Let me give you some ideas. First of all, I'm going to tell you about the, how to deal with the cancer itself. But keep in mind, if you don't take care of the underlying issues, the cancer comes back. This is what relapses are about. Cancer comes back because even after you kill the cells, if the environment is conducive to cancer, cancer comes back. Cancer is an environmental issue. It's a cell issue because all diseases are cell issues, but the cell responds to the environment it's sitting in. Cells are sitting in a soup, and that soup is a nutrient soup. It's a, uh, an oxygen soup, and it's also a toxicity soup under conditions of lack of nutrients, toxicity accumulation, and that includes sugar, and a lack of oxygen. So that's soup is not going to be able to sustain a cell, the the cell will then become cancerous. Cells turn cancerous as a coping mechanism. It's a way that a cell deals with a stressful environment. So controlling the environment becomes very important, the cellular environment. Now, there are also things I would be doing if I had cancer, in addition to working on the environment, which is more long-term. And I'll tell you a couple of those when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this commercial break. Back on the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to David in Texas about uh, leukemia, about cancer. So a couple of things. First of all, uh, if you're dealing with cancer, your number one job is to make the body stronger. Cancer only exists in a cellular environment that is toxic, that is robbed of oxygen, or that is nutritionally deprived and sugar counts as a toxin. Okay, that's step number one, is making sure that you're providing the body the wherewithal in terms of nutrition, in terms of oxygen, and in terms of not burdening it with toxicity that it has to deal with, including sugar. I'm always going to say including sugar, just to reinforce that. So it's not magic here. This is just making the body stronger. So you don't want to have to focus too much on the diagnosis as much as you want to focus on having a healthy, strong body. And this is especially true if you're dealing with like a a really debilitating or long-term cancer where you're just falling apart at a rapid rate. Don't worry about the cancer. Worry about the body. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying, Dave? That flies in the face of everything we, we are taught about how you deal with cancer. We're always focusing on killing the cancer. But if the environment is toxic, it's not going to work anyway. And at the end of the day, we don't necessarily want to just be have our diagnosis removed. We want to feel good. So focus on making the body stronger and feeling better. That's the first thing. Mighty 90 essential nutrients, the triangle of disease, staying away from sugar, all the things we talk about regularly. That having been said, if you're dealing with a, a dramatic crisis, crisis like cancer, there's a couple things that you might want to consider. Number one, chelation therapy. Chelation therapy is when they inject a chelating agent. A chelation means to magnetically attract. And a chelating agent is like a little magnet that uh, that uh, instead of iron filings, it, it magnetizes toxins and it pulls them out, including metals. 
So using um, um, chelation therapy periodically, once a week, well, every couple of weeks, whatever it is. Speaking of intravenous, go ahead, I'm sorry. Referring to, to, to IV. IV, uh, this is IV, like kind of yes, sir. EDTA. EDTA, you, you, you got it. I, I would go IV. Okay. Yes, you can do oral chelation. Seaweed is orally chelating. Selenium is orally chelating. There are spe specifically oral chelating agents, non-nutritional. Hey, Dave, I don't know what that noise is, but uh, can, if you can, can you control it there? It's pretty, it's hard to listen to. Uh, yeah. Also, so let me just finish up here real quick. IV glutathione is also helpful. Intravenous glutathione. Glutathione is the body's major cancer fighter. The more drugs you're taking, the less glutathione you're going to have, ironically, because glutathione is used by the body to detoxify chemotherapy. So you you're, get your chemotherapy, you rob your body of glutathione, now it's even less able to take care of cancer. So all of these strategies, by the way, are even more important if you're on, chelation, if you're on chemotherapy. So using glutathione intravenously, now they have some oral glutathione uh, supplements you can use. I don't know how well they work. They claim they do. I don't know. But that's something else you can try. You can build your own glutathione with NAC, N-acetylcysteine, glycine, G-L-Y-C-I-N-E, and glutamine. These are three amino acids that go to build up glutathione. And you can also use selenium, which helps turn it on. IV vitamin C it can be really helpful. These are all things I would be doing personally. I, uh, IV chelation, IV vitamin C, and IV glutathione, IV nutrition in general. Moving the body around. Yeah, it's a, lymphoma is a lymphatic cancer, so moving the lymph around. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. What, what type of a, amount of, of the uh, chelating? You, know, you can't you just do it. I, I don't know the dose on the chelating agent, actually. But just do the standard chelating, agent, uh, chelating dosage and then do it, uh, and then do it uh, uh, periodically, especially okay. if they're on chemotherapy. And, of course, the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, moving the body around. These are all things that are going to make the body stronger. Uh, uh, deep breathing, hyperbaric oxygen, that might help you. Uh, but, you know, focus on the body is the main thing. That's, that's the main thing for when you're dealing with cancer. That's how I deal. Let the doctors have this cure. If I ever said I cure cancer, I wouldn't be on the radio the next day because the doctors own that word cure. Fine. Let them have the word cure. There's no cure anyway, so you can't cure. You can reverse, and that's what you're really looking to do and also make the body stronger. I'm going to let you go, Dave, unless you have anything else. Well, I got a question. One more about the um, about oxygenization. So I've seen a lot of... Um, uh, um, ozone generators that, uh -huh. that make a lot of planes and, uh -huh. and, and, and they're and not miracles <laughs> they're not miracles right. but ozone's a good thing okay okay all right all right, buddy. Be good. In the right direction. Thank All right. Take care, man. Bone soup. Don't forget your bone soup. Cartilage and bone soup. Ow. I forgot about that one. And aloe vera, by the way. That's also. Uh, and Fucoid Z. And beta-glucan. And restart your life. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Tom in Nashville. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Uh, I recently had a uh, MRI for low back pain. And they found that I had a large renal cyst on my kidney. Okay. Do you suggest anything? Yes, I suggest that you figure out why is your kidney so stressed out. I don't know how long you've been listening to the program, but here's the, here's the main idea. Okay, When you have a cyst or you have a growth, something is, something is uh, a growing where it shouldn't be growing, if you will, you're looking at a weak spot. The kidneys naturally are a natural weak spot because they filter the blood. And because the blood is, for most of us, especially as we get older, becomes toxic, uh, it makes sense that the kidney would be one of the places where we'd have breakdown and kidney disease is like an epidemic and kidney cysts aren't blatant kidney disease, but it's a sign that the kidney is, is, is weakened. Also, as I was saying earlier, there's a relationship between estrogen and insulin in cysts. So if you want to go all out here real quickly, work on your sugar. That's the most important thing you could do for two reasons. Number one, because uh, sugar is going to tox out the blood. It's going to make the blood thicky and sludge, thicky, thick and sludgy and make it difficult for the blood to go through the kidneys, and that can weaken the kidneys. So working on your sugar will help there. And then secondly, by working on your blood sugar, you'll lower your insulin, and that will increase the life, decrease the likelihood of cysts. So work on the blood sugar. That's the first thing I would think about doing. Now, if you're older, the chances are that you're making a little bit too much estrogen. This happens as we get older. I'm guessing you're in your 60s. Is that right, uh, Tom? 72. Okay. Oh, 72. Okay. So uh, chances are good that you're carrying a little bit too much estrogen. You might want 
want to take control of that. So number one, work on the blood sugar, reduce your intake of sugar, use your sweeties from longevity, beyond tangy tangerine from longevity, more soluble fiber, anything you could do to help support sugar metabolism and sugar excretion out of the kidneys. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is work on your female hormone, your estrogen levels, uh, help the body process estrogen, and then use balancing substances. You might want to go get yourself some DHEA, maybe 10 milligrams of DHEA. That's good for all older folks, by the way. You might also want to consider pregnenolone capsules or uh, pregnenolone tablets, 100 milligrams a day. Vitamin A can be very important for helping balance out estrogen along with vitamin E. I'd be, making, I'd be using 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day, 400 IU of vitamin E. By the way, you're going to feel much better when you start using these supplements, regardless of what happens with your kidney. 50 milligrams of zinc a day, very important for blood sugar control and for hormones also, zinc deficiency being incredibly common. And then also you want to make sure you're balancing out your zinc with copper. Whenever you take zinc, you also want to take copper with it, maybe two to four milligrams of that. Keep your, uh, pay attention to what you're eating. Keep your diet under control. That means low calorie. I'd be going ketogenic diet. The less you eat, the better off you're going to be. At the age of 72, that's one of the kindest things you could do to your body is not make it use up its precious resources on digesting food and allow it, excuse me, to use its nutritional resources on building. That's what we want to be doing. Do you want to digest your food, folks, or do you want to be building a strong body? Do you want to digest your food or do you want to be anti-aging and fighting disease? That's really what it comes down to. That's why the less you eat, the longer you live. So keeping your intake of foods down is also going to be very important. Like, uh, like our last caller, uh, chelation therapy can help clean the blood. Usually when you have a cyst or have something going on in the kidney, there's um, the blood toxicity issue and chelation can help clean the blood. Also, your ultimate EFAs, omega-3 fatty acids, as well as the beyond osteo effects with the magnesium are vasodilating. They'll open up blood vessels, improve blood supply to the kidneys. And also uh, niacin can help do the same thing. That's uh, uh, your ultimate niacin from longevity. Tom, I want to get one more call in, my friend. And, oh, don't forget, drink lots of water, too. That can help you, too. Help uh, dilute the blood a little bit. Thanks for your uh, thanks for your call, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, Don in Georgia, you get the last word. What's up, my man? Hey, how you doing, Ben? Um, doing good. Really quick on protein powders. Can you go over that uh, amino acid profile that you just went over a little while ago? I think you mentioned. Uh, I was talking uh, about whey protein and the BCAAs. Well, no, you were talking about the glutamine. The glutamate, I think uh, it was, the glutamine. Yeah, glutamine. Yeah, the, uh, I was talking about glutathione uh, and glutamine. Right. Actually, we talked about glutamine a couple times. Glutamine is uh, maybe the most important amino acid. It's the most abundant amino acid in the blood. Glutamine helps you build glutathione, which is an anti-cancer fighter, and glutamine is an, a sugar craving buster. So using proteins that have high amounts of glutamine can be helpful for sugar cravings, also for the immune system and for dealing with health challenges that involve detoxification or glutathione. Whey protein is the king of glutamine supplements. There's some in beans. And there's some in other high-protein foods, but nothing beats whey protein. Hey, I got to go, Don. That's, uh, that's the music, and we're just flat out of time on the bright side. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our website, truthtreatments.com, for truth skin health products, truth treatment products, and also brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. Or call 866-735-2470. They can help you out there, too. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular, awesome day, my friends. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.